Defensive tap for Villanova, and they get it. Now let's see if Raleigh Massimino does sit on it for a time and try to bring them out of their zone. Memphis State likes to sit in his zone. They're playing man-to-man, they man, Brent. Out right in the man. They missed their first shot. Take it off by Keith Lee. Now here we had that's a surprising switch. Dana Kirk may have anticipated Villanova trying to hold the ball, so he starts out in the man to man. Double team by Villanova. And on the steal, it was Harold Presley. Villanova does as good a job trapping with the size team they have as anybody in the country. Keith Lee on Presley. Now let's see if Presley tries to take advantage of him. Without a clock, Villanova, a tough team to play because they're very patient, have experienced guards. Presley comes out high, puts it down against Lee. Great job by Ben. <laughs> Bedford sealed it up inside magnificently, jumping over to help out. He really did a great job there, Brent. And Bedford, as everybody knows, is one of the most talented young big men in the country. And that time, Presley went right by Keith Lee. Memphis State opening the game in a man-to-man -man defense. Better job by Lee. He stayed down on his feet that time. Realizes Presley's going to use the pump fake. Good man-to-man -man defense now by Memphis State, but Villanova will be patient. Pinkney. Memphis State, here's their leader, Andre Turner. Bad shot. Turner really got lucky. He took a bad shot and got fouled from behind. That was the first foul on Wilbur. But one of the things Turner does so well, he pushes the ball up the court and forces a tempo that Villanova really wouldn't want to play. So even though he took a bad shot, he establishes a pace of the game. He is a player who has gone from being called Andre Turnover to the little general. He has raised his game. Well, I thought that was kind of unfortunate in one way, Brent, and that is the fact that when you bring a freshman in to lead a seasoned ball club, as was the case for Turner his freshman year, it's asking an awful lot. <laughs> Turner picks up Gary McLean. Plains a man that's going to penetrate, but probably not try to score. So a good job by Turner just to try to keep him under control. Presley has it knocked loose by Lee. Now Turner, but Presley hustles back. McLean bounces in. Wayne McLean scores. Great pass by Eddie Pinkney. Good drop off and hustle by Presley because he was out quick by Turner, but still got to the ball. See this sequence, a good bounce pass inside. Eddie Pinckney realizes he's got a man open, dumps it inside, great job. And for Raleigh Massimino, you want to see this man, Dwayne McLean, go, Dwayne McLean get off the snide early. First foul on Askew. One of the most unusual looking shots in college basketball. Full court pressure. This full court man type pressure. Villanova picking up everybody, including the man taking the ball out of bounds. Excellent angle to watch it unfold. Turner will try to beat this press all by himself with the dribble. And is good at it. Presley on Lee. That's going to be a key matchup. He fronted him that time and came up with the steal. Good ball fake by Eddie Pinkney. The patience of Villanova. Dwayne McClay. Bedford. Now, if you're going to get that kind of rebounding superiority, Memphis State's got to break Villanova and try to get some easy, fast break baskets. Turner, give it up. Now Villanova changes their defense now. They showed man-to-man. -man. Now they're back to their matchup zone. And they play it as well as anybody in the country. Holmes. Askew and 
Lee were both over there on the rebound. They had sealed it off and they drew the foul. Looks like it's going to be on Presley pushing off inside. Good rebound on the outside by Askew. Foul is charged to number 21, Harold Presley. His first team second. Holmes inbounds to Turner. Villanova goes back to their matchup zone. Lee. Oh, good rebound by Bedford. If Lee's going to get many shots like that inside on that zone, Brent, he's going to have a big day. Villanova can't afford to let him have the ball in the lane. Turner knocked it free. McLean touched it last. And Turner forced that. It looks like the officials are going to let this game be played kind of tough. Not many quick whistles. Memphis State 0 of 3 here in the early moments of this game, trailing 3 1. There's Lee. Through the foul from Pinckney. Well, Villanova tried to trap that time out of their matchup zone, and when they went for the double team, an excellent job over here by Baskerville Holmes to hit Keith Lee, who moved to the basket perfectly. Eddie Pinckney couldn't get there in time, and there's Lee's great hands to go up for the shot. And obviously Villanova can ill afford to have Eddie Pinckney in any kind of foul trouble. Two shots. Against Oklahoma. Last week down the stretch, Lee buried four critical free throws. Well, at one time in Keith Lee's freshman year, and I believe also in his sophomore year, he was shooting close to 90% from the free throw line. One of the nation's leaders. This year he's at 77%, but he's got a good touch. Good job by Dana Kirk to pick Villa, Villanova up high, so he's forcing them not to be in a slow game. Wilbur. Second foul. Eddie Pinkney on a push. Now let's see if Dana Kirk tries to attack immediately at Eddie Pinkney in that matchup zone. He's going to be buried down on the baseline, but he picked up two quick fouls. Askew. Bedford fouled Presley. There was a case where Askew, the freshman, putting up a shot in a hurry, needed to show a little more patience to get Keith Lee the ball inside and make Pinckney really work. And as we know, the Villanova bench is not a long one. Relatively inexperienced and doesn't have a great deal of talent. Both teams are perhaps a little tight. Villanova, one of five from the floor. There's Turner taking the ball away from McLean, showing super hands. McLean's got quick hands himself, so that's surprising. Presley. Wilbur got inside and Lee rebounds off that miss. Wilbur really has been in a drought. He was benched, of course, last week when couldn't get it going. Jensen came in and did the job for him. Love to Bedford. Excellent pass and timing and something that Memphis State can take advantage of with those two giants in the back line. Presley, and it's rejected by Lee, and here comes Turner in Memphis State. Villanova really getting a little shaky right now, Brent. They may have to go for a timeout to slow things down. This pace is a lot faster than Raleigh wants. Askew. Raleigh doesn't want to use a timeout this early in the ball game, but he's trying to get his players to recognize they've got to slow this tempo down. Presley was sealed again, but he got it to Pinkney. We talked about Eddie Pinkney's quickness at the top of the show. Now, he may have been in that lane of, of three seconds, but he got by with it right here and shows his quickness as he goes right around Benton. First foul on Holmes. Bailey will check in for Memphis State. 
in practice back in Memphis. Bailey broke the glass backboard. And Dana Kirk said, I wish he hadn't have done that. We're not a half court team. We need that other backboard. Well, I'm surprised at that substitution. Normally at this time in the game, Dana Kirk would come in with Becton. But he wants to keep that massive front line going. And now we have Jensen coming in for Villanova, who had the great game last week against North Carolina. Villanova changed their defense a little bit again. McLean coming out to put pressure on the ball, and they're back into the matchup zone. As gets it inside, and right away, Bailey contributes coming off the bench. Well, I'm not going to question Dana Kirk's substitution one more time in this game. <laughs> Weighs in all three seconds. Six foot nine inch freshman. You have to be impressed with Memphis State's man-to-man -man defense. If you're going to play in the national championship, you've got to go out at times and play people man-to-man. -man. They're doing it well. Gary McLean. Askew. Memphis State leading in the early moments of this semifinal, 9-5. Turner, not a good shot again. Two bad shots by Turner. Jensen. Like he's picking up right where he left off against North Carolina. I've never seen a sub come off the bench when both teams were having problems last week for that Southeast Championship and just ignite a club like Jensen did. There's that defense matching up. It's a zone, but they pick up people in their area. And there's Keith Lee coming across the lane, which is what he can do so well. Bedford travel. Keith, Keith Lee's asking to come out. He needs a breather. We've got a timeout. 9-7. Memphis State ahead. He'll be jumping up and down over there. Well, he's lost a lot of weight, Brandon. You know, he comes out now in like three different outfits in the course of a game. Let's have a new tailor. Presley gets in, Bedford rejected it. Great hands by Keith Lee to catch that ball off that board. Oh. Keith Lee was maneuvering on the inside, and now he's stepping outside. He does have a good jumper out there, so don't be surprised to see him take one from 15, 18 feet. They move it to him. Askew on this wing. Dana Kirk has the biggest club that he can put on the floor. That's a push by Pinckney, and he gets away with it. Push Bedford right out of the way. McLean came up, and Bailey fouled it. McLean really has a big quickness advantage on Bailey. I think he senses it. Poor shooting so far. 38% by Memphis State, 25% by Villanova. Not that unsurprising. You know, Brent, there's so much emotion for kids involved getting to the Final Four. They have a hard time getting those jitters out early. Shot selection hasn't been real good. Memphis State shows his own out of bounds. Jensen missing. Lee. Here's Turner. If people want to know what kind of shot Turner hit to win three games at the end of this season, that was it right there. Good fake. Solid jump shot. Maybe a tremendously underrated all-around point guard. We'll see as this duel unfolds against Gary McLean. He's been hounding him very well. Presley. And that's a state just controlling the boards. Villanova gets one shot and done. Raleigh will try Plansky off his bench here in a moment. One of his best outside shooters, and he realized he's got to get some points on the board. Bedford right up over the top of Pinckney, smashed it in. What happened to Eddie Pinckney? He thought Keith Lee was going to put up a shot, so he was getting in position to rebound, but Lee is such a good passer, he got it inside. Gary 
McClain. They gave him that shot that time. Turner sloughing off to help out inside, and they're saying, go ahead, you can have it. All right, McClain looks to go ahead and make the play first and the shot second, and he's throwing up two bricks here. You can see that Plasti, whom we mentioned, has checked into the game. Lee again holds that ball high above his head. One of the best passing big men that's been around in a while. Bedford was fouled by Dwayne McLean inside. Obviously wouldn't put him in the class of a Larry Bird, but for a man his size, he sees the court extremely well. He's going to come out and take a little rest right now. Not many people expected that man to spend his full four years at Memphis State, but he was really committed to get that degree. William Bedford will stay in and center, and Bailey remains up front, and Boyd, another freshman's in the backcourt. Turner misfiring, and Askew tracks it down, and he was fouled by Gary McLean. Villanova is not a real big team, but they block out extremely well, really well coached, and that's why Bedford couldn't get to that rebound. Raleigh realizing right now he's up against a superior team physically, and he's got to keep his guys pulled together here. What was it Dana Kirk said yesterday? I've already won one championship. I'm the best non-Catholic school in the country. Up against Villanova, St. John's, and Georgetown here at Lexington. We have the two outstanding freshman guards now in that ball game. Now that Boyd is in there, Boyd and Askew. McLean steals. Gary McLean hits Jensen. Jensen is two or three off Massimino's bench. I think it's going to be a good time for Villanova to start trapping a little bit against Memphis State with the two freshmen in the ball game and Bailey not being a real good ball handler. They're staying back in their zone matchup. Bedford missing and Bailey came in over the back trying to rebound and committed the foul. An awful young team on the floor right now. And Dana Kirk has gotten a lot of mileage when he had Keith Lee on the bench because this young team has a lot of quickness. Like Lee coming right back in the game. He just wanted that short blow. There is an official timeout. timeout in Lexington. Nine minutes and 28 seconds to go in the first half. Memphis State leads. And Brent, when you're a young player coming in, playing with such a dominant player as Keith Lee, you have to understand your role. He has done that very well. And I think next year he's going to blossom into a major scorer on the collegiate ranks. Here's a little trap defense by Memphis State. 2-2-1 two, two, zone trap. And now Memphis State goes back to the zone that Raleigh Massimino figured they'd be starting with at the beginning of this game. 2-3 zone. Lansky, a pretty good shooter. Takes a bad shot and hits it. He really forced that shot, but got away with it. Surprisingly close there in the rebounding situation. It was 13-11, Memphis State leading oh, huh. over, and there's but, an enormous difference in the rebounding. Well, that shocked me when I saw 13-11. Brent, I was just glancing down here because it seemed like Memphis State's absolutely controlled the board. Lee. Short. Jensen hasn't come to him, and now Villanova can tie this trip. Staying in the 2 3 zone. McLean for it. Nice job by Villanova, particularly Eddie Pinkney, to spot the open man in a hurry. Blocked by Pinckney. Bedford controlling for the Tigers. Again, the defense changes. Now Eddie Pinckney comes out. They have Jensen down on the back line. Lee from the corner, short. And a third opportunity as Memphis State dominating the offensive glass, and Raleigh Massimino was beside himself that time. And he changes his defense, put Pinckney back down inside to try to stop this rebounding advantage.
Wally is getting into it. He's starting to heat up over there. Bakney is fouled. Bedford came into him, and that's two on Bedford. And to give you an idea of Eddie Pinkney as an offensive player, this year he has taken 281 field goal attempts and 247 attempts from the foul line. So he really makes that defense work. Here is Becton, instant offense for the Tigers normally. Bedford will sit down. Villanova right now is on a 6-0 run. Last Memphis State score. It's back at the 11 minute mark. We're down to 718 remaining here in the first half. Well, ever since Memphis State moved Keith Lee outside, Brent, they haven't been able to get him in the offense. Blansky sends it back to McLean and out of bounds. It'll go over. Probably didn't like that. And what happened? He had one teammate faking another one out. Plansky had the jump shot and just didn't take it. Keith Lee is 0 of 3 from the floor here in the first half. Oh, left hand. Use the left hand. Great play. That's where Keith Lee can score on that defense. Eddie Pinckney is one of two here in the first half. Dwayne McLean. He loves to shoot down on the baseline. Cross to Becton and back to Askew. Good passing strategy to throw it over the top of that zone cross court and then pump right back inside. Askew's offense has dropped off here in the tournament. They may need him to take some shots from the wing before it's over. Goaltending, score it. Pinkney rose up and got the ball on the way down. So right away, Keith Lee comes back and he's two of five. Nice job by Dana Kirk to get Keith Lee back inside. He realized when he moved him outside, he wasn't getting any offense. Moves him right back down in low and right away he scores. Memphis State picking up again now. Three-quarter court. Back to the man-to-man. Dwayne McLean again. When he gets hot, he can burn it because he's a streak shooter. They're trying to keep a body on Keith Lee inside, but he's getting excellent position. Turner. If the defense gives you something, Brent, you've got to take it. And that time, Jensen tried to go down and double team to keep Keith Lee away from the ball, but Turner saw the opening. Pinkney coming down the baseline, fouled by Lee. And that is his first foul. It's one and one. And that has to please Dana Kirk in that Keith Lee has played three quarters of the first half and picked up only one foul. In their last dozen games, he has been in constant foul trouble for the Tigers. That foul trouble has been so uh, difficult for Keith Lee that actually he has been a non-factor in a number of big games. Pinkney a 72% free throw shooter. It's a member of our Pan Am team. That was a busy summer for Eddie Pinkney. Played in the World University Games and the Pan Am Games. He wanted so badly to make that Olympic team. Villanova stays in their matchup zone defense. Keith Lee, Lee double team, battling inside, rejected by Pinckney. McLean. Villanova can take the lead this trip. Oh, 
Eddie Pinkney wanted to take Keith Lee with the dribble. Traveling. Got a timeout in Lexington. Four minutes and 20 seconds left here in the first half. Memphis State leading by a point. Brent, you pointed out the rebounds while we were away for commercial. Said it's amazing Memphis State's not farther ahead with that type of margin, which is true. They are controlling those boards. Holmes. Wilbur has replaced Gary McLean in the backcourt for Villanova, number four handling the ball. Here's that 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. Wilbur, not the ball handler that McLean is. Wayne McLean. Three in a row for McLean. And four of five for the first half. Plansky's really putting a body on Keith Lee inside. Keith Lee has a lot of size, but Plansky's banging him pretty good. Beckman's off. Askew scooping it up, and he was fouled. We'll see. Plansky was banging Keith Lee so much he didn't realize that Askew was coming in behind him on the, on the missed shot. You'll see why he picks up the foul. All of a sudden, Askew is in position for the rebound. Plansky out of position and commits the foul. And that's the case. It's so tough. You can't handle two people. Askew is an excellent rebounder and athlete and another one of those super Memphis kids. Take me off the miss. the seventh rebound for Lee here in the first half. He said at the top of the show, he has a great pair of hands. When he catches that ball, it's all his. He, away from the ball. Lee on an offensive foul, banging Plansky out of the way. Give Plansky a lot of credit. He's really been bodying Lee inside. Patrick is smiling and shaking a lot of hands. But he'll be all business in a few hours. William Bedford, number 50 has returned for Memphis State. What? Plansky a 60% free throw shooter, but I think that's deceiving because he has a good touch. Beckton rebound. Game is tied. We've got two minutes and 50 seconds to go in the first half here in Lexington, Kentucky. Jensen knows who the hot man is, but this time they go to Pinckney off of Dwayne McLean and Beckton fouled him. Jensen came down the floor and he was looking for Dwayne McLean. He's the hot horse and they want to ride him and he got it to Pinckney right there. Good passing down on the baseline. Probably a pretty good foul by Beckton inside because Eddie Pinckney's an excellent three-point play type man. You might as well foul him tough. Beckton the transfer from St. Louis. Has had an excellent uh, postseason period and played very well in the Metro Tournament. Pinckney is only one of three from the free throw line. Normally, he's better than that, and so he picks his average up. And that's the first Villanova lead since the early moments of this game. been so tough in the last two games at the end of the first half. That's where they've actually come back. They're doing the same thing now. In deep and there was a collision underneath. 
It'll be a foul coming in. Holmes coming over the back. Villanova's defense really causing problems for Memphis State now. That matchup zone is so well executed. We see exactly what Turner wanted to do. He wanted to go ahead and throw the ball over the back side of the zone, but Holmes didn't get there in time, and Plansky had excellent position. And that's the second foul on Holmes with Plansky moving to the free throw line. Beckton didn't block out. Or Betcher didn't block out. Traveled when he fell to the floor. Go to Memphis State on the turnover. They have a chance to tie it. And of course, coming up at halftime, Dick Stockton. It's like he's getting dressed up there, doesn't it? Got a great view from up there. And Vic Bubis, who was the chairman of the NCAA basketball committee and a man who knows all about the pressure that Raleigh Massimino is in right now since Bubas took Duke into the final four. Well, I think Raleigh has to feel that his defense has really carried him this first half as they have most of the year. Askew from the wing missing got it back. <laughs> Memphis State ball. Beckton suffered a blow in the facial area. Right now with Keith Lee on the bench, it looks like Memphis State's having a hard time deciding where they want to focus their offense. Lee has, of course, been on that bench a lot, as you pointed out, Brent, with foul problems throughout the course of the tournament. But they've got to find somebody who can score right now. Plansky going for all loose balls. He's going to go ahead and go after the loose ball as Willie Beckton got hit in the eye, but I think he's all right. During that stoppage, Massimino sent in Chuck Everson. Gives Eddie Pinkney a rest and keeps him out of foul trouble this last minute and 30 seconds. Holmes comes down the baseline. Ties it at 23 with a minute 22. And there's the gamble Raleigh took. He didn't have Pinkney's quickness in there to stop that move. Everson not quick enough. And Villanova has turned it over. And Eddie Pinkney's coming right back in the game. That's one of those coaching moves you make and you outsmart yourself. For Villanova, number 54, Ed Pinkney, replaces Chuck Emerson. Raleigh being a good coach that he is, didn't waste any time making up for that mistake. Ed Pinkney right back in there. Bedford. We're tied at 23. Both Maryland and North Carolina lost a lot of momentum when they didn't handle the ball well for the last shot and a half. And Dana Kirk wants the last shot right now. Villanova is going to stay back in that zone. Dana's going to hold it for the last shot. And you can believe Turner is going to try to get some kind of penetration against that zone. The zone spread out pretty well on the wings. He doesn't realize it, but five seconds. Gary McLean stayed with him, and Turner came back down with the ball and traveled. And now there are three ticks of the clock here in the first half. And Villanova will try to move quickly and get a last second shot. It's amazing. Three games in a row, Villanova has stymied an opponent's attempt to get off the last shot. Remember, of course, the North Carolina game, McLean got the three-point play at the end of the half. Time has expired here in the first half. Villanova and Memphis State head for the locker room. That can't be, Doc. I never played first base a day in my life. The man has a marvelous sense of humor. And the team dearly loves him. After they beat North Carolina, they were all over 
rubbing his bald head. They said it would bring them good luck here in Lexington. Well, that's something they need against the Tigers of Memphis State right now. 20 minutes for a berth in the championship game on Monday night, and we're deadlocked at 23. Villanova starts with that matchup zone that we've all been talking about and handled it very well so far. Holmes gets his own miss and puts it back in. Not a good job that time by the Villanova guards. That ball was uh, in that no man's land area for a rebound. You got to go back and get it. Might have been back court. The ball had not come over front court very close. Pinkney maneuvering. And of course, right away, Memphis State gets help with a second chance point. And that could give them a big edge in this game if they take those offensive rebounds and turn them into points immediately. And again, Villanova showing they're so tough to get a fast break against. Their transition game from offense back to defense is about as good as anybody in the country. Dana Kirk wanting to play the patient game. He said, if they want to dance slow, we'll dance slow. Very versatile club out there for Memphis State. They'd, they'd like to get Keith Lee the ball on this time. Tried to get it to Bedford. Knocked out of bounds. Dwayne McLean was back helping out for Raleigh. It's so difficult to get two men the size of Lee and Bedford to play smoothly in the post because they take up so much room, it's easy to defense them in there. Bedford. He gets his own miss, goes inside. And Dwayne McLean sticks with it, and finally Bedford pounds in, and now that tremendous difference in offensive rebounding is starting to show up on the scoreboard. And here's Memphis State. They're staying in that man-to-man. -man. They played a little zone today, but primarily they've been a man-to-man -man team. Gary McLean. Gary McLean. In the first half, they let McLean take that shot, and he didn't hit it, but drilled that one. Bedford was reaching up over the top of Pinckney, and that's his third personal foul. One of the reasons that Ed Pinckney is so good at drawing fouls, not only on the offensive end where he uses his quickness, but he's excellent at blocking out inside. He put the body on Bedford, and he tried to go over his back, and it just didn't work. Jensen, along with Gary McLean. Presley, Dwayne McLean, and Pinckney up front. Here is Pinckney. Bedford trying to stay out of foul trouble. Had to be as active, and look at Pinckney. Sensational play by Eddie Pinckney, because he had to know Keith Lee was right there. Now, we're looking at two big men in college basketball with as good a set of hands as we've had in some time. And Eddie Pinckney knew he was there and dumped that back over his head. Sensational play. And he's back on the line again. He lives there. You know, put in perspective how often Eddie Pinckney's been on the line. Chris Mullen, who is constantly on the line for St. John's, actually has been there 15 times less than Eddie Pinckney over the course of the year against basically the same competition. Bedford sitting down with his three personals and Bailey back on the floor for Memphis State. Villanova leads again. Lee. Goaltending. That was Pinckney coming from the weak side. And in this defense, what helps Eddie Pinckney is that he very seldom has to handle the man that gets the ball originally inside. He can come over from the weak side to help out. Gary McLean goes down, and here comes Turner. McLean tried to challenge the little man. He's going to lose McLean goes one. down again, and Turner comes to tie him up. And a personal foul is called on Turner. 
Now, what would have been smart for Turner is to not go ahead and jump on McLean because if you're standing and fall to the ground with the ball, they'll call you for walking. When Turner reached in, that's what committed the foul. Now, watch him right here. At that point, Turner should have just stayed away from him. And there's no question it was a foul. Knocked away by Askew. Presley setting screens up top. Blaine McLean maneuvering. He is five of seven. And again, the big man from Memphis State. The set with foul trouble. Villanova is back in that zone in much tighter here in the second half than they did the first. Although McLean's out at the top now, as a pass is made, you can see he drops inside the foul line. So there will be some jump shots available. Lee. Villanova. Villanova doesn't give you the break, but they don't look for it much themselves either. Attempting to regain the lead. Pinkney. Fouled by Lee. That's number four on Keith Lee. Well, Dana Kirk has tried to protect Lee all day by maneuvering players in and out of the game, but this is a big foul here. I thought Lee had all ball. I thought the foul was on Bailey with the body. But Lee gets called. Lee has sat out better than an hour already in this NCAA tournament because of foul trouble. Here he is forced out at the 15-32 mark with Memphis State ahead of Villanova by a point. And that was the fourth team foul on Memphis State, none on Villanova so far here in the second half. And Villanova a good foul shooting team. What's interesting, you know, there's Keith Lee on that bench. Villanova shooting 71% as a team this year. Their opponents are shooting 74%. That is really some percentage. defense has really taken away Turner's offense. There he Very takes short. another shot. Run down by Askew. <laughs> Bailey jump pass inside. Now the turnover, it's Jensen. <laughs> Turner came in and he fouled Gary McLean, reaching in. That is the second. Turner didn't want that call. Pretty strong kid. McLean is also. And he just attacked him with that ball. Now it is five team fouls on Memphis State and none on Villanova. Still to come, Georgetown and St. John's, and then the winners will meet Monday night for the national championship. One of the things that helps too when you have, when you play that type of defense is have a very senior oriented type club because you've got to play it a lot to play it well. And that's what Villanova has. Pinkney was open. Pass was away from him as he was leaving that area on the turnover. Memphis State coming in. Gary McLean keeps Turner back out. Askew is one of three and has not been looking for his shot. Well, two weeks in a row with Kenny Smith, the great point guard of North Carolina, never really being able to challenge this defense. And now you have him, Turner having problems. Becton. McLean gives it over to Gary McLean. They are not related. Dana Kirk may have a big decision coming up pretty soon. 
Grant in the fact that he may have to bring Lee back sooner than he expected if he can't make some kind of move and go back and play him in his zone. Presley passed up the shot. He was 0 of 5 in the first half. Pinckney on the turnaround. Bedford really disgusted with himself because he thought he had Pinckney well defensed. Memphis State is scoreless since 16:44. We're at the 13:30 mark of the game now. Holmes fouled by Dwayne McLean, and that's two on Dwayne. And that is the first team foul against Villanova this half. Which really helps Raleigh. He Dallas likes Jones to be in that position where he doesn't have that other ball club on that foul line, particularly late in the game, because he'll use them very well. Dangerous pass. Askew is the fellow that they're giving the shot to here in the second half on the wing and he hasn't been taking his jump shot. There it is. He's got it. He won't take it. Bedford. Three men and he traveled. Oh, it's the technical foul. Turnover and now there is a technical foul being called against Memphis State. They call that foul. We ought to say something about the officials, Ben. We'll see the play coming up. Now, there was a case where Askew wouldn't take the jump shot, so he put his teammate Bedford in a tough position. Bedford backed in and got the foul. He was so upset, he couldn't throw the behind the back pass, and when he did, it caused the technical. The officials for today's game were the three officials that were selected as having the best game in the four regionals last year as a crew, or last week. And that's how they advanced to the final four. We'll see that behind the back pass, and that's a technical. Villanova getting that little spread margin now. Four points and the ball. And they're tough without the clock. They're a very patient team. Now Memphis State picking up their defense. Good half court pressure. Jensen. Presley. He was fouled. Picking up that rebound, and that is four fouls. But if it's going against Becton, I think it's Bedford. And that's Bedford's fourth. I, Keith Lee's got to come back. That's what Dana Kirk's going to do. Now, what makes it so tough? You bring Lee back, but you don't have the lead, so you can't go in the zone to protect it. So everything coming up roses right here for Villanova. Bedford sitting with his four and Keith Lee playing with four fouls. Knocked out of bounds. Basketball Holmes asking for five seconds. That would have been a quick whistle to give him five there. Memphis State in the zone defense. Let's see if Villanova pulls it out and makes them play man to man. Cross court to Jensen who will take it. Considerably in the second half. 12 minutes to go in a spot Monday night's championship game. Knocked away by Presley, run down by Holmes in the corner, and here's Lee coming down the baseline, and Presley came back on him, and Pinckney was there. Eddie Pinckney thought Keith Lee was charging, and had he played the defense for position instead of blocking his shot, he may have been able to pick up the charge. Good power move by Keith Lee inside. Lee has got to be careful, but you can't be too careful when you're down six. Let's see also, Brent, if 
Memphis State tries to pick up full court if Lee makes these to try to get some pressure and get this game turning into a little bit more of a up and down the court type game. St. John's helping out a brother from the Big East. You can see their fans waving their arms at Keith Lee at the free throw line. Memphis State had gone almost five minutes without a point before Keith Lee hit that free throw. And here comes the full court pressure. 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. Presley. The move by Harold Presley. And that is his first field goal of the game. He missed five in a row. And Villanova really picking up the confidence. You can see it in your eyes. Askew still reluctant to take the jump shot on the wing. away by Gary McLean who's got control. Raleigh Massimino will not let Memphis State play the zone the rest of the way. He's going to spread them out and make them really work. Dwayne McLean short but Presley rebounding and another big play by Harold Presley. Can you imagine Memphis State going up against somebody named Presley? You can see right now, Villanova going to spread that man-to-man -man out. Dana Kirk will not be able to play a zone, and Villanova can play the spread game extremely well. In the painting. Uses his shoulder. Back to the rebound. Lally wanted that fifth foul so badly. With this much time in the game and a six-point lead, it's worthwhile going at Keith Lee a time or two. Jensen helping to seal off Lee. And again, Askew has got to take the shot. They get it to Keith. Turn around, Pinkney is there. The foul is called on Memphis State. And that is number five on Keith Lee. Kirk has stated so many times that he thinks that a rule ought to be changed in basketball that a player cannot foul out. It's the only sport that takes place this way. And there's Lee going up, loses possession of the ball, comes down and comes over the back. Kind of a touch foul, but Presley out position. And that's it for Keith Lee unless his teammates can pull him out. And he has to come back with Bedford, who's got four fouls on him. He doesn't want to walk off the court. He's staying right out there, but he's off. I don't know what the holdup is. You, know, you have to get a man in. He's trying to decide between Bailey and Bedford. It's got to be Bedford. A disappointed young man right there, Keith Lee. Ten minutes and 21 seconds, and Villanova now in control against Memphis State. Dwayne McLean is throwing up the darts today. That unusual looking shot, but he has been very positive throughout this game. Villanova's been amazing in the second half of the NCAA tournament. They've played very mediocre first half, but they've been a great second half team. It's about the worst rotation a shooter could possibly have on a ball, but they go in. Bedford. Pinkney sealed off that side. Grab the rebound. Villanova continues its run. It is now 13-2 over the last six minutes. And you see Villanova changing their offensive strategy now, spreading the game out without a pivot man. And then Pinkney will slide down inside. Traveling. We'll go over to Memphis State. 
Memphis State has a pretty quick team on the floor right now, so they can go chase somebody man to man. Now, one big change now. Dana Kirk has put Askew at the top and put Turner on the wing, meaning that he wants to get Turner some jump shots from the wing, but I think he's on the wrong wing because he's up against McLean, who's got too much size on him. You can move him over on Beckton's side and get the jump shot. Holmes on the turnaround. Full court pressure on the defense. 2-2-1, two, two, full court zone. Then drop back into a man-to-man. McLean again goes down. Turner dueling him. He gets it to Presley. Here's Jensen. Presley. And a foul on Pinckney. That's three on Ed Pinckney. Now, Brent, you made an excellent point before about sometimes a team relaxes. Now, Villanova is not executing the way that they should in terms of spreading Memphis State out. I realize Memphis State has a quick team, but Raleigh can't be happy with the fact that everybody's trying to rush things so much. And maybe it is working out, just as you said. Turner wants that jump shot, but you can see McLean's just a little too tall for him on that side. Turner takes it. He hits it anyway. He stepped out a couple of feet. And that's exactly what Dana Kirk wanted. He realized he wasn't getting the shot at the top, and Askew wasn't taking it, so he moved him over there. Presley ships it back to Dwayne McLean, and now Villanova again being very patient. The team in this tournament that has taken the best advantage of not having a shot clock is Villanova. Pinkney wants that ball on Bedford inside to pick up the fifth. Eddie is so quick. Gary McLean. Beckton. Hands to Turner. Memphis State can pull to within two. I have seen Memphis State on several occasions this year play better with Keith Lee on the bench. It seems to unclog the middle a little bit, especially for Bedford. He's got room to maneuver inside. And I think this move with Askew on the top makes them a lot tougher to defense. He's got good size up there. Just a small adjustment, but one that helps their team. Beckford. Beckford rebounding, and the foul is called on Villanova. It'll be on Presley as he broke out of there over the back, his third. Yeah, if Dana Kirk was over watching the game without the emotion involved right now, I bet you he would take that move. Here you see the shot going up, Villanova blocking out pretty well, but from nowhere, coming on the side is Willie Beckton. But I believe he would move Turner over to Beckton's side because he'd be matched up with Jensen and could get that shot. Seventy three percent free throw shooter. There's that two two one zone press again. And Turner's looking to try to pick off some kind of pass. Villanova has missed five shots in a row. Normally, Turner would be a guy playing up in the front, but he's so quick back there, he almost picked it off. Wally uh, Massimino wanted a timeout. Six fifty-seven, and since Lee fouled out, Memphis has outscored Villanova six to two. Villanova scoreless for the last three minutes. That's a good timeout by Raleigh Massimino because his club really did get confused. They probably got a little complacent out there. Now they're going back to the regular offense. They're not trying to spread things out. Trying to get Eddie Pinkney the ball. He's got it. And he traveled. Excellent call by the official. Eddie Pinkney was trying to work so hard to get that foul. Bedford would not commit. With just a sophomore, that was a great defensive play by Bedford. <laughs> a 
Andreescu just will not take the jump shot. And he's got a good one. Beckton. He misses. Jensen rebound. Six minutes and five seconds. Presley comes through. Missing, and Holmes crashes inside on Pinckney, and he drew the personal foul. Today there's been a, a lot of pressure that Presley has put on that defense by penetrating with the dribble. He didn't make that shot, but it really created an opening for Eddie Pinckney. Villanova still not in the one and one on the other end of the court defensively, so they're in pretty good shape there. And there's Presley. Presley off the miss. He won't show up much in the stats tomorrow, but he's made big plays. And there's still some big ones to come before this one's over. spreading it but right now Memphis State showing some pretty good man-to-man -man defense surprising Raleigh is spreading it hanging on to it with this much time to go in the half because he's up against some tough defense here the bad pass and the foul is called on Dwayne McLean. Well Brent I was really surprised going over tried to hang on the ball at this point in the game because Memphis State has a quick team out there and if you just kind of hang on to it as aggressively as they're playing sooner or later it's going to be turned over. Good job by Turner. And a chance to tie it up. Look who's over on this side. Andre Turner's over here to take the jump shot. He's got it. There's the shot that you said was there. He doesn't get the roll. Presley with another big rebound. But the shot was there, and Dana Kirk realized where the opening was against that zone. Turner goes down trying to draw the charge. No whistle. Four and a half minutes to go here in Lexington. Himself. Turner injured a leg. He also has a shoelace untied. But he may have injured either a knee or an ankle. He hit that ground. His leg kind of slipped out from underneath him. Now, Dana Kirk has either got to call a timeout now or he has to take him out of the game. And at this point, I think he would be wise to take the timeout. Here he slips and that knee just hit hard on the floor. What's Dana going to do? Looks like the referee's not going to make him do either. Well, you know Turner's not coming out of the game. He's a gutty little kid. He's over on the side where he can get a jump shot now. Still another chance to tie. Pass into Bedford, foul by Dwayne McLean. That's his fourth. Foul is charged to number 32, Dwayne McLean, his fourth, team six. Well, both of these teams got to this final four by winning tight ball games, and they're going to get a chance to get down to the wire in another one. Stuffed by Pinckney. Out of bounds, Memphis State ball. That was a break for Memphis State, and then a tough turnaround jump shot from that position for Baskerville Holmes. His team get a better shot down two. Now, by overloading this zone the way that Memphis State's doing it, 
It changes the matchup that Villanova has. Turner's open over here on the left. There it is. Tied at 41. Well, Brent, that's a great move by Dana Kirk, and not, not because he's doing what I mentioned, but because he realized what that zone was giving him, and he moved his men accordingly. Villanova has not scored since the 10-minute mark. We're down to 314. Now Rodney Massimino goes back to his regular half-court offense. Dwayne McLean rises in the air, and Baskerville Holmes commits his fourth personal. That'd be a big loss for Dana Kirk. Now, he can replace some people, but Holmes has been the man defensively today that's got the perfect matchup size and quickness to go against Villanova. Last year, Basketball Holmes was the sixth, seventh man type. Bobby Parks got hurt. He came in and did an excellent job. And had Memphis State not suffered some very tough injuries last year, they might have been in the Final Four last year. see that rotation on that ball on TV, Brent, but most people have the ball spin right over the top of itself. This goes up kind of like a knuckleball, but they do go in. And that one that went in ended six minutes and 56 seconds of Villanova not scoring a single point. So Dwayne McLean has hit two free throws here to put them back ahead. We're at the three-minute mark. Danny Kirk wants a timeout. In the last game of regular season, remember Florida State, they had to go to overtime and get that one tied up at the buzzer. Mm. Captured the Metro Conference Championship in overtime. Dana Kirk called that time to out to make sure they got a good shot on this possession. Holmes wants it inside. Swings back to Askew, who is strictly a passer here this afternoon. By Askew not taking the shots, he's putting a lot of pressure on his team. Bedford chips it back to Turner, who's open. A brilliant pass by Bedford, but he couldn't hit it. And McLean with a powerful rebound for the Wildcats. 2.20 now remaining. Bedford really had some presence of mind to get that ball back out because he was hung up up in the air with no shot. And now a four corners offense by Villanova. Dwayne puts it down, gets inside, Holmes and jams on him. Bedford with four fouls could not come over as aggressively as he normally would have. But he got that quick first step and Nova now leads by four. 17 points for McLean. Now the clock becomes the opponent again and for Memphis State they've got to get a shot up here. Becton will take it. Goes to the glass and they're back to within two at the 140 mark. And the 2-2-1, full court pressure again. Turner looking. Fouled by Askew. Presley goes to the line, a 64% free throw shooter. We've mentioned this a time or two in the season. He's very unusual on the foul line. He either drills them perfectly or throws up the craziest looking air balls you'll ever see. He goes to the line with a lot of pressure right now. Highly recruited out of New England. Considered one of the top 25 prospects in the country. You can see under a 60% free throw shooter in the last four minutes. <laughs> and he drills it. Now what has helped is Villanova players rebound very well when he goes to the line on missed free throws, because his fouls that he missed usually bounce way back out. Well, there's a side that exactly. time, and Bedford hands it to Turner. And for State down by three. Askew will not take the jump shot, and is putting so much pressure on his teammates. Gets it into Bedford. It is a one point game at the 117 mark. Timeout. 
Dana Kirk will bring his team over. Was lurking out here in center field, just Eight. waiting for an opportunity. Now he'll pick up Gary McLean. And Villanova in the four corners. And remember what happened the last time. Dwayne McLean was able to beat Holmes with a one-on-one -on -one dribble. And that's all for Holmes. Big foul there. They didn't want that. Baskerville Holmes joins Keith Lee on the Memphis State bench. Now Dana Kirk looks down his bench and he can't go back with big people. He's got to go back with somebody that's got some quickness. If you look down that team, I think we're going to see Will Fong in the ball game now. Dana has to realize that that's five. He's got Will Fong to call on. He could go with McCoy, but I think we'll see Will Fong. <laughs> and it's funny, you see those players saying, is it going to be me? Some kids want to come off the bench right now. Now, Will Fong has the great genes. Both his dad and his uncle were outstanding players at Memphis State. I'd go for the genes. Nope, it's not going to be. It's Dwight Boyd. Yep. No, it is. Oh, He's wait a minute. He's changed it. Okay, by. there Here we comes go. Genes. One for the genes, right? <laughs> yeah, you get the gut feeling. You know, hey, we're in Kentucky, right? You go by bloodlines. This kid's family had been winners at Memphis State. And he gets picked to come in the game. Now have to slap a little color in his face and be in great shape. <laughs> but none any bigger than this one about to be put up by Dwayne McClain. And that's a two-point Villanova lead. Boy, McLean has given some kind of senior performance today. He's been solid in every aspect of the game. No streaks at all except hot streaks. Fifty-four seconds for Memphis State. Got to get one up in the next ten seconds here. Beckford, fine catch. Turner realizes it penetrated, wouldn't stay in Pinckney, and now Villanova is just 35 seconds away from a shot at a national championship. Got a foul. They have got the foul. They have got the foul because they need two possessions. They've got the foul. And finally, Turner fouls Gary McLean. The problem there for Memphis State was, and the reason they had the foul quickly, and that's a little bit early to celebrate, but they needed two possessions, Brent, down three points. Trade Raleigh Massimino ready for it. Missing. Will Fong tap back, and Villanova will play for the championship. Let the celebration begin in Philadelphia. The Wildcats have done it. We still have four seconds to go. The officials are trying to get everybody organized out there. Fans coming out of the stands. 